Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to the watchdog timer on Arduino. And I know what you're thinking. You see this, you know, cute graphic on the front of the screen and you're thinking, wow, Forstronics now has their own graphic designer on staff. Actually, I did that graphic. I know it's it's hard to believe because it's so professional looking. Anyway, before I get started, uh, if you're not yet a subscriber to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and let's get started. Okay, what is the watchdog timer? The watchdog timer is a timer that runs independent of the CPU. You know, it's a separate module that can be used to trigger and interrupt or to reset the microcontroller or the microcontroller CPU. So it's a standard feature on all microcontrollers. It's on the Arduino chips. I'm going to focus more on the AVR ones. Specifically, I'm going to show an example with the, the Uno chip, the 328P. But all Arduino chips are going to have a watchdog timer of some type. So what would you use them for? Well, what, what they're good at is if you want to perform, for instance, if you want to perform a task on a regular interval, like let's say every second or every two seconds or every 500 milliseconds, you want to perform some task. Well, the watchdog timer can be used to go off every second. It'll trigger an interrupt. And in your interrupt service routine, if you're not familiar with an interrupt service routine, I'll show that you can then do that regular task. Now, there's other ways to do that in the chip, but the watchdog timer is one way to do it. Also, it can be used to wake up the chip from sleep. So let's say you want to go into a power down mode and you want to wake up every interval to, let's say, read a sensor and then transmit that data out somewhere. And then you want to go back to sleep, conserve battery life. You can use the watchdog timer for that. And I actually have another video on power saving with the Arduino, a series, so I show an example on that one as well on this. I'm not going to show a sleep example here, but I'll have some example sleep code in the example code that I'll show you. Then also you can use it to reset the microcontroller, so it can be used to interrupt, it can be used for a reset, and it can be used for an interrupt, then a reset. So why would you want to use it to reset the chip? Well, let's say that, I don't know, your, your code gets stuck somewhere, and this is real critical code. And what you can do is you set the watchdog timer. So every once in a while in your code, you clear it, you reset the watchdog timer. And what happens is if you don't reset it, then that means your code is stuck somewhere or something happened and you want the chip to go into reset and start all over. So that's what it can be used for is, you know, every two seconds or four seconds or eight seconds, if you don't do a reset on it, it'll reset your code in case your code is stuck in a bad state. I also want to mention for AVR chips, there is actually a library out there, so you can include the library on there and there's some functions, so that way you don't have to, you know, do direct register manipulation. Unfortunately, the library, and I don't understand this, is not very complete. It provides functions for resetting the watchdog timer, for enabling it, for disabling it, but what it doesn't provide is a way to actually change the setting, change it to reset or interrupt. So you have to combine sort of the registers with the library, and that's what I'll do in my example code. So here is actually the watchdog timer register. I grabbed it out of the data sheet. You know, I'll have this all in my, in my example, but this is the main register we're going to mess with. And the idea here is to use it in certain ways, you have to configure the, the different bits on the register. Don't worry about this one. This is just a fuse and... This fuse will always be set to one for us because that's how the uh, the Arduino is comes configured. So we're going to really more worry about these. So you can see you can have no watchdog timer. You can set the watchdog timer. So as it goes off, once again, it's a timer. As When it goes off, it triggers an interrupt. Then you can set it, these two bits, for system reset. So it'll do a reset. Or you can do an interrupt and a system reset. So let's say... You want to reset your system, but you want to make sure you save or change a couple variables before you leave. You then can do an interrupt where you, you know, do your cleanup at the end, and then it'll trigger a reset. So I'll show all three of these. You can also, and I don't show this on the slide, you can also configure some of these bits as timers. So you can have the watchdog timer, I think, run as short as 15 or 30 microsec milliseconds, excuse me. And then there's different settings. So it can be 500 milliseconds, a second, two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds. You can configure it to go off every so often. And the library actually provides macros for the time. And I'll, I'll show an example of that.
Okay, speaking of examples, let's get to the example. So here I have just a basic setup. So I'm using an Arduino Uno, and all I do is connect a switch or a button to pin 2, between ground and pin 2. So what I use this for is my watchdog timer reset. So in my main loop, and I'll show you the code, whenever the button's pressed, an if statement detects it, and then it resets the watchdog timer. So it's my way to start the watchdog timer over again if I don't want it to go off. Let's take a look at the code before we get into the example. Okay, here is the code for the example. Here I call in the watchdog timer library. I also call in the EEPROM library because I use the EEPROM to store something before I do my interrupt reset. So I'm going to use the LED, so I call the pin for the LED. I use a variable to track what setting I'm in. Notice this tag volatile. So this is something, a tag you want to use when you're basically changing a variable inside an interrupt service routine. And an interrupt service routine is just a function that's called when an interrupt occurs. I actually don't modify the variable in the interrupt service routine, but I just wanted to show you if you're, if you're modifying a variable in the interrupt service routine, you want to name it volatile. Okay, so here is the setup code. First of all, once I get in here, I disable the watchdog timer. And this is actually something the data sheet recommends so you don't have any problems with the watchdog timer. I then set my LED pin 13, which is you know the LED on the Uno to output. I'm gonna use pin two for the button. So I just set that to an input I, and I do a pull up. Then I call this function get settings. And let me go to that function. So that function's right here. And all this is gonna do is it starts the serial monitor. It tells me we just started up. So we're gonna actually use this because we wanna know every time we just start up because that means a reset occurred from the watchdog timer. I then have this if, if statement, and this is used to detect if an interrupt occurred before we went into reset. Because once again, that's one of the ways the watchdog timer can work. We can do interrupt, reset, or interrupt, reset. So this just detects if there was an interrupt before the reset so it can tell us that that occurred, just for example purposes. Uh, and then I reset that variable in EEPROM. And if you're not familiar with EEPROM, it's like a hard drive. So you can store something and, and that variable will be there when the chip starts back up. I then print out my settings menu. I say, okay, uh, type in a one if you wanted to just interrupt, type in a two if you wanted to reset, and type in a three if you wanted to interrupt and reset. I then wait for the user to enter it. I check to make sure it's valid. I say what the setting is, and then I get out of here. Now notice I put serial.n here because we want to turn off serial communication because it, it also uses interrupt and I don't want to mix my interrupt so I end the serial communication. If I go back up to the main code, I then call a function that I'll show you in a second that is set the watchdog timer. So if it's one, you know, set it for interrupt. If it's two, set it for reset. If it's three or if it's else, uh, set up for interrupt and then reset. And Basically, these inputs, it's a byte, and I have this B means in binary, so I wrote it in binary, but I'm setting those registers that I showed you on the other slide. So let's actually go to that function. Okay, here is the function. So first of all, I have to initialize some bits uh, right here, which I, on the same register, and then right after that, in a short time period, I think it's like four clock cycles, as per the data sheet, you then have to set your register. So that's, you don't want to put any code between these two settings. So I call in, first of all, I take in the byte for my setting, and then I or it with this macro, which comes from the AVR library, and it's basically setting it for two seconds. So this is actually a number, once again, it could be represented in binary if you wanted to, I'm just using the macro. Go to the, uh, you know, just search AVR watchdog timer library and you can see the different macros you know if you change that two to a one it'll be one second so on and so forth then I call another function which comes from that library which resets the timer and, and what reset means is it doesn't turn off the watchdog timer it starts the timer from zero again so the timer is always running so what I'm doing is I'm resetting it so I know it's starting from you know zero then if an interrupt occurs this is my interrupt service routine ISR so this is a function, and since I put this macro in here, it's, it knows it's coming from the watchdog timer. So 
An interrupt, if you're not familiar with it, I have a video on interrupts. But when an interrupt occurs, wherever the code is, it stops and it jumps to this function. And here, for an interrupt, I'm writing the LED to high. So when, I, when an interrupt occurs, let's say the watchdog timer goes off and an interrupt occurs, it's going to turn on pin 13. Then, if I'm in setting 3, meaning the watchdog timer is triggering an interrupt, then a reset, this is where I set that variable so I know when I start up again that an interrupt occurred. Okay, and this will make more sense when I show the example. Also, I put an example function. Once again, I show this in another video on power saving for Arduino. But this shows how to set up sleep and then set up the watchdog timer for an interrupt. And then it basically puts the chip to sleep. And then based on timer, which is an input, you're setting the watchdog time interval. That's how often the watchdog timer will go off and wake you up from sleep. So I just put that in here for example purposes. I'm not going to go over it. Let me just go back to the loop real quick. So there's not much going on in the loop. Loop checks for a low at digital pin 2. If it's there, it turns off the LED, and then it resets the watchdog timer. So the idea is, once we set up the watchdog timer, if I press the button, nothing will happen. I'll keep resetting the watchdog timer. When I stop pressing the button, it's after two seconds, the watchdog timer will go off, and either an interrupt, a reset, or an interrupt, then a reset will occur based on the setting. So let's take a look at that. Okay, here is from the code. I'm connected to the setup I showed you. It says we just started up, so we went into the setup code, and now it's asking me to input uh, a 1, a 2, or a 3. So a 1's not going to work very well because if an interrupt occurs, the LED goes on, and you're not going to see that. So let me just show an example with 2 or 3. So I want no line ending, and I'm going to type in a 2. Now once I press Enter, that sets up the watchdog timer for reset, if it doesn't get re excuse me, it sets it up for a microcontroller reset. If the watchdog timer doesn't get reset in two seconds, the chip will reset. So I'm not going to press the button. I'm just going to let it go. Okay, after two seconds, the chip got reset. The watchdog timer went off. No one reset the watchdog timer, so it triggered a microcontroller reset. So let me show that again, and I'll press the button this time. So let me do two. Now I'm pressing the button. Every once in a while, you may be able to hear it. And so the watchdog timer is not going to go off. If I stop pressing the button, it goes off and resets the chip. Let's do a 3. So I press 3. I'm pressing the button, so the watchdog timer is getting reset. If I stop pressing the button, it goes off. And notice this time, since we were in setting 3, interrupt reset, it prints out this extra line of you know, serial communication or text, basically saying we just started up and an interrupt occurred. Once again, and I use that by storing a variable in EEPROM. So that's the example. And of course, if I did an, an interrupt only, you would see the LED come on. If you press the button, the LED would reset. So that's a simple example. That's how you use the watchdog timer. Okay, so that's, that's a simple example. I'll post the code to my blog. And just so you know, I recently did a video showing a way to reset the Arduino board using code uh, and a little hardware. And the I'll compare it to this way. is Basically, this is more of a cleaner way to do it with the watchdog timer. The method I showed in my last video is more if you want to make sure you're pulling the reset pin low because you want to reset something else that's also tied with the Arduino. That's when you would use that type of method. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.